What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about two SID chips, the back SID and the original SID. And we're going to do a diagnostics test and see and hear, rather hear what the difference is between the two. Uh, so back SID is a recent technology SID that according to the developer Eevee, it is developed to make it for video games as close as possible with the aging now 40 plus years later, 41 to be exact, of, uh, of SIDS, the original SIDS, there are some alternatives out there that aren't too bad in pricing, you know, somewhere between 30 to 40 bucks, uh, as, as high as uh, 70 bucks for uh, one that's coming out of, I believe, Germany. Is a, I, can't, I can't remember the name, I think it's FP SID or something, um, but I ordered that one too. So for now, we're just gonna do these two tests and let's see how it sounds. Let's get right into it. So right now in my original board that I use for testing, you can see I threw heat sinks on all of them. My SID is hink seat uh, synced up right there. And that one came off a pretty spanky and great condition, 1982. Uh, board this is 1984 um i still gotta figure out what's wrong with my original 1982 because it's uh it's just not working we may have to send it out to ray um ray c i don't know how to pronounce that i think it's clinton but he's uh he's down in washington and i spoke to him yesterday and he told me that he may fix my my good 1982 board this is my 1982 board you can see how clean the components are i mean pretty awesome Rev A 1982. I understand these are like rare, hard, hard to find, but at the same time, uh, a lot of these weren't socketed. They were actually uh, soldered in. Um, from the ROMs here to, I believe these are maybe character ROMs. Um, don't quote me on that. But the check out these uh, these these memory RAMs. They're like golden. Is that a gold? Yeah, I guess it's like a golden plate. It's not a sticker. For some reason, I thought there was a sticker. It does appear to be a golden plate, though. Really beautiful rams. Um, but there you have it. I've tested out all the components of the Vic. You can see the Vic is gold as well. And uh, and those are working. So anyway, let's get... That's not what the point of this video is to look at an old board. The, the point of this video is to get into... A comparison of the state so i'm going to hook up my dead my, my diagnostics uh, car, uh cartridge here I, I have one of these diagnostic cartridges that i found on ebay so i got my diagnostics in i'm going to hook up uh video and hook up the uh power and we should be good to go video in Power in. Always remember to touch the metal to ground yourself. And let's power it up. I may get a lot of bad failures because I don't have all the uh, components hooked up to this. I really just want to hear that sound. That's the point of this video. My RAMs are testing good. RAM test one. Screen RAM looks good. Stack page is okay. Zero page is okay. Color RAM is okay. PLA test is okay. Yeah, so there's my controller board. User port all bad. Intro, I get it. I'm not sure that's going to show up in sound. It's almost like a, it's like a low, low bassy, um, like a low bassy. I don't know. I don't know how you would describe that. It's like a, a fuzz sound. So let me turn up the sound a little bit there. I'm going to pop out my my SID, 
and go ahead and um, and replace it with Edie's chip. So you'll see that here in a second. Yeah, let's unplug the power. We don't want to fry this thing. I'm always scared of zapping my uh, my SID. So I'm, I'm grinding myself using a socket remover. Save that SID in a safe place. I've already killed like one SID and I have three dead. One sort of is dead, but it's like yeah, it's just not, I get some sounds out of it, but it's not, it's not 100%, so, um, here's what this looks like, back sit, comes in a nice packaging. Now, I'm in the U.S., so it's kind of nice that Evie is also in the U.S., uh, she has a passion for C64 since like, I believe her story was that she's been into it since like during COVID, like pre-COVID, like 2019, I uh, really got into developing uh, parts for it. So uh, this is what my back sit looks like. Just got that. Let me zoom in there for you guys. Now, I know a lot of people swear by the arm sid, but you know I'm I'm mainly a gamer, and then I, I do music second. So uh, I like playing games, and if EV says this was intended to be built for games, and that's what you gotta shoot for. If you're a music produ productionist enthusiast, then you want to make sure you look and read and and test for for that. So um, you gotta go where what makes the best sense for you. Again, I was, I've been looking for an alternative because this guy died. And I want to put my, my good Sid back into my, my clean C64. That, that's where it came from. So that looks, that looks well fitted. It, it's, it's slightly raised uh, off, off of the, I don't know if you guys can see that. But it's, it's slightly raised off of the ground there. right there all right so let's power this up and see what it sounds like My workbenches are always dirty, so I don't understand how these guys are shooting videos with like uh, clean benches, but hey, I, <laughs> I'm just showing you the real life that I got stuff everywhere because I'm always working on projects. Here we go. So that was the sound test. It de definitely sounds a bit louder uh, than the other one. So uh, maybe that that last portion, the bassy, it was a little bit more uh, developed in the in the original Sid. But for me, it sounds like it's a higher, maybe like a notch higher pitch, if that makes sense. Um, anyway. Uh, to, to do a, a true test, I believe there's others out there that have done back sit comparisons of the of, of the of the waves. Here it is again.
I mean, I'm pretty happy with the alternative, um, especially how expensive SIDS are becoming now. So I'm gonna put this back together and then test out some games. All right, moment of truth. As I'm learning from the C64 community, I highly recommend it on Facebook. Great group of people, a lot of good tips. I always ask questions like who's who's like you know my 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 simplicity of joysticks is I, I like the Atari 2600 I, I like the rubber feel but I also like I'll recommend one called TAC2 I bought this uh sort of like beat up not really that bad but it's got some lines here uh it looks like Burton lines from like a like a soldering iron or whatever but um you know you never want to hot swap joysticks when the when the computer is on so I'm gonna hook up player one, player two, because sometimes games switch between the two. And I'm also gonna run my 1541 Pi drive that I built. There we go. So I got my joysticks hooked up now. Uh, let's hook up our drive. Here's my 1541 drive. It's not labeled. I see some people label them and there's a different printout for your 3D printer that makes a, a really cool one, but this one is not that one. It's just a simple little drive. You can see it booting up. And it should pop up here as soon as I power it on. And there it is. All right. So let's try out a game. I'm gonna make sure that's all on camera. Yep. So I'm just going to load up a random game so we can get some sound here. I just forget which way is what. So enter looks like might be my, my, my right button up and down is the ones next to it. Let's go to... A's. Let's try 1942. Loading. And I think we're ready to go. I don't have a Jiffy DOS on this one, so I'm just going to manually type it. I do have Jiffy DOS on a, my one of my uh, SX... 64s, which is pretty cool. I like I like the concept of not having to type. I got enough nostalgia <laughs> already for typing, but it does get repetitive after a while. There's my 1541, letting me know it's loading. Loading, loading. I love engineering concepts like this that really revolutionized the 64 for me. Sure, taking a while to load still, but. Must be a big game. So we'll be right back after it's done loading. All right, it is done loading. Let's run it. I see activity down at the bottom right. So this is a, a trainer hack. You can see the about down at the bottom. You guys be the judge of the sound.
I'm just glad it sounds working. So there's a sample of a song. I do kind of like that activity down at the bottom right. It's letting me know something's loading. Do we want infinite planes? Yes. Engage auto fire. Yes. Invincibility? Sure. Infinite rolls? Sure. You want to use C equals to skip level? Yes. You want to start at level 24? Uh, let's start at level 1. Value 24 keeps the high score saver. Okay. Maybe I should have left that at 24 then. I guess I'll put it back. View the hidden part of the game. Um, requires reboot to play the game. Now, let's get started. What a beautiful game. And the soundtrack is pretty good. All right, looks like it's gonna be the Atari. It's already auto firing for me, so. All I do is just fly the plane around. Obviously not as colorful as the uh, arcade version, but it's not a bad port. Let's try that level skip. Last stage. You can tell I've never played this game as high of a level. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap. I'm happy it works. Great job on this uh, back sits, Evie.